Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our unit on work. For our video lecture today, the main focus will be the TED Talk: Why the Best Hire Might Not Have the Perfect Resume. In this talk, you will learn about two types of people categorized by the speaker, and the speaker will explain each type of people carefully to us. And then, when we are done with the talk, we will do some comprehension exercise to check your understanding. Then, we will move on to finish introducing all seven. Okay. Verbs that can be followed by gerunds and infinitives to learn how to use them properly in detail. Okay, in detail. Okay. Without further ado, let's get started. Please turn your book to page one hundred and sorry, wrong page number to page sixty four. Okay. So the learning method for each talk is the same. You need to have the transcript ready. You can get it from Trang Class. While you are listening to my lecture, or after you listen to my lecture, you can fill in the blanks. Okay, you can fill in the blanks, or you can even take notes on the transcripts. Okay, so if you have a printer. I recommend you print it out. If you have another device, okay, make sure you type in all the words into the blanks. Okay, so now let's take a look at page sixty-four. In the first TED talk about the app, we are learning how to listen to content words. In the second TED talk, ten ways to have a better communication. We are learning how to listen to fast speech. And in this talk, why the best hire might not have the perfect resume. We are learning to understand contrast. So please take a look at the upper left on page sixty-four. See the section on authentic listening skills. You will see more information on contrast. It says we often compare and contrast ideas when we are explaining things. When you listen, try to identify these contrasts. Speakers often show that you are about to hear contrasting ideas by using words like but, however, not x but y. In spite of this, on the other hand, and etc. Or you might see repeating structure, replacing some words with their opposites. Later, when you listen to the talk, I would like you to try your best. To identify these words, okay, like however, or to identify repeating structure from the speaker, or if that's too difficult for you, try to identify them on the transcript, okay, on the transcript, okay. The same. Whenever we listen to a TED talk, you need to pay attention to the delivery. How does she talk? Does she use any interactions? Okay, and then what about the content? What is the main purpose, and how does she make her points convincing? And finally, always put everything you read, or you watch, or you learn into perspectives. Okay, always challenge other people's arguments. Do you agree or disagree with her? Okay. Before we listen to the introduction, let's pick up a few words. First of all, application here refers to the form someone fill up to make a request for something. For instance, when you want to apply for a university or apply for a job, you need to fill up up an application. Second, candidate. Candidate is a person who is suited for for something. For example, for the presidential election, we usually have two to three candidates for all the people to choose from. Number three, odd jobs, meaning small jobs of different types, especially repairing things or cleaning things. So, if the jobs in, is about cleaning or fixing things, we call them odd jobs. 
Number four, colleague. Another word for this will be coworker. Okay, colleague is a person who works with you. Category. It means a kind or division with a within a system. For example,、um, in English, all the words can be put into eight categories. For example, nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. These are the categories of words. Qualify meaning fitted for a given purpose. For example, for all the English teacher in the university, they must have at least an MA degree to be qualified for the position. Flawless. Flaw means something bad. Flawless meaning without anything bad. So flawless meaning having no flaws. Distinct means not the same. So it means outstanding. Be destined to means you are controlled by your destiny to do something. So if you think、uh, singing is your calling, you can say I am destined to sing. Political correct meaning the language and action. You use and take, okay, are not offensive, okay, to others, okay, are not offensive to others. That would be politically correct. It's very important in the twenty first century. Judgmental means involving, forming an opinion about something. So if your friends does something and you always have something to say, then that friend might describe you as a judgmental person. Launch means to start or give a start to something. For example, every year, a, a Apple、uh, creates new f- new products, new devices, so that there will be、uh, product launch. Okay, so they are launching new products. Revoke means to take something back. Okay, to take something back. Okay, so now let's listen to the introduction. And the same for the introduction. Try your best to identify the three elements: background, problem, and main argument. All right. So let's get started. Your company launches a search for an open position. The applications start rolling in, and the qualified candidates are identified. Now, the choosing begins. Person A, Ivy League, 4.0, flawless resume, great recommendations, all the right stuff. Person B, State School, fair amount of job hopping. And odd jobs like cashier and singing waitress, but remember, both are qualified. So I ask you, who are you going to pick? My colleagues and I created very official terms to describe two distinct categories of candidates. We call A the silver spoon, the one who clearly had advantages and was destined for success. And we call B the scrapper, the one who had to fight against tremendous odds to get to the same point. You just heard a human resources director refer to people as silver spoons and scrappers, which is not exactly politically correct and sounds a bit judgmental. But before my human resources certification gets revoked, let me explain. A resume tells a story, and over the years, I've learned something about people whose experiences read like a patchwork quilt. That makes me stop and fully consider them before tossing their resumes away. A series of odd jobs may indicate inconsistency, lack of focus, unpredictability, or. It may signal a committed struggle against obstacles. At the very least, the scrapper deserves an interview. All right, let's unpack the introduction together. 
For the background, the speaker describes the job application process, right? So for every job opening, there are actually there are usually two types of people, which are person A and person B according to the categories made by the speaker. So what is person A like? Ivy League, come from very good good schools. 4.0, good grades. Flawless resume. The employment history is perfect. Great recommendation. Important and famous people recommend them for this job. And person B, they are average school, and then they do jobs here and there, and those jobs are not important jobs. Okay, so these are usually two types of people. We will see in the job application. Okay, so here we already see a contrast, right? And this contrast is formed by repeating structures. So person A, four words to describe it. Person B, four words to describe it. So this is what uh, the The books mean by repeating structures. Okay, by repeating structure, and then the speakers goes on to explain these two types of people in details. For person A, she calls them silver spoon because they their experience is flawless. Okay, it's flawless. They are destined to success. And they usually think they can be successful. On the other hand, okay, type B or person B is called the scrappers. Their experience is nothing special, okay? It's nothing special, and they usually have to fight extremely hard for what they want. So, if in front of you you have two types of people, like. These for you to choose from. Who do you pick? Okay, who do you pick? For the speakers to come up with this kind of terms is not professional because her occupation is human resources director. She should be respectful for different types of people. Okay, so that's why she makes a joke here by saying, "Before my human resources certification gets revoked." So revoke means take away. Okay, so this speaker interacts with the audience by making jokes. So her point is, every resume tells a different story, and from her experience, she believes that the scrapper, which is Person B deserves an interview. Okay, so from this TED talk, you can see the argument is to show people why the scrappers、uh, deserves our time to know them better or even give the position to them. Okay, so this is the introduction. Before we start looking at the body paragraph, let's pick up a few more words. First one, schizophrenia is a kind of mental disease or mental illness. It's a mental illness that is categorized by disturbance in thought, perception, and behavior. So, if a person has schizophrenia, they may have trouble、uh, in thinking or in identifying things, or sometimes their behavior might be a bit inconsistent. And trauma. Is an emotional wound or injury, okay, caused by、uh, an unfortunate event. For example, in the past, a lot of American men fought in Vietnam War, and when the war was over, they still had trauma. Sometimes, when they hear big sounds,、uh, bad memories might be triggered, and that is an example of a trauma. And dysfunction means something that is not function normally. Insight meaning the power to see into a situation. Okay, and adversity is a key word here. It means a challenge or a major difficulty. 
committed, meaning you are willing to give all your time and energy to do something. For example, if you are committed to your study, then you will do well on your major and even be successful in the future. Be beneath someone means to be in a lower position than someone. It means you are your position is not as high as others. Motivated meaning you are passionate about something. So if you are motivated to learn, that would be great.、Mm-hmm. Productive meaning positive results. So every day we should try our best to create positive results in order to stay productive. Counterintuitive. Meaning something that does not happen in the way you expect it to. Okay, so to counter the prefix here means be against something. Toss away means to throw away. An engineer to word here is a verb. It means to arrange something for something to happen. Okay, for something to happen. Okay, so let's continue to see what the speaker says. The example she uses in her talk. So let me get the talk to the right point. So we were probably at here, right? A committed struggle against obstacles. At the very least, the scrapper deserves an interview. Right. To be clear, to be clear I don't hold anything against the silver spoon. Getting into and graduating from an elite university take a lot of hard work and sacrifice. But if your whole life has been engineered towards success, how will you handle the tough times? One person I hired felt that because he attended an elite university, there were certain assignments that were beneath him, like temporarily doing manual labor to better understand an operation. Eventually, he quit. But on the flip side. What happens when your whole life is destined for failure, and you actually succeed? I want to urge you to interview the scrapper. I know a lot about this because I am a scrapper. Before I was born, my father was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, and he couldn't hold a job in spite of his brilliance. Our lives were one part cuckoo's nest, one part awakenings, and one part a beautiful mind. <laughs> I'm the fourth of five children raised by a single mother in a rough neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York. We never owned a home, a car, a washing machine, and for most of my childhood, we didn't even have a telephone. So I was highly motivated to understand the relationship between business success and scrappers, because my life could easily have turned out very differently. As I met successful business people and read profiles of high-powered leaders, I noticed some commonality. Many of them had experienced early hardships, anywhere from poverty, abandonment, death of a parent while young. To learning disabilities, alcoholism, and violence, the conventional thinking has been that trauma leads to distress, and there's been a lot of focus on the resulting dysfunction. But during studies of dysfunction, data revealed an unexpected insight: that even the worst circumstances can result in growth and transformation. A remarkable and counterintuitive phenomenon has been discovered, which scientists call. Post-traumatic growth. All right, let's unpack the examples and terms she mentioned here. So, from the first body paragraph, we start to learn about、uh, the downsides of having of hiring silver spoon, because silver spoons they are usually graduates from prestigious. University, so sometimes they refuse to do manual work. For example, getting coffee or making copies. And when they are told to do these kinds of jobs, quite often they might lose the motivation or passion for this position. 
In the end, they might quit. Okay. In the end, they might quit. Okay. So that's why the speaker says the silver the silver spoon's ability to handle hard time is questionable. Okay, it's questionable. And here again, we see the transition to show contrast. Okay, did you hear on the flip side? So on the flip side, what happens when your whole life is destined for failure and you actually succeed? So before she brings up the phrase on the flip side, she is talking about the silver spoon. So now she is going to direct your attention to the opposite. So that's why it is used here. So she, first, she uses her family background, okay, as an example of a scrapper. In other words, she is a scrapper, okay. So, in what way is her family a scrapper, okay? Or in what way is she a scrapper? She uses her father as an example. She, her father was diagnosed of schizophrenia. Okay, schizophrenia. And you now know what schizophrenia is. Okay, it's a kind of mental illness. And because of this mental illness, her father was not able to do a job. Okay, or stay committed to a job. So her father had to change jobs quite often. And she even describes her family life as one part cuckoo's nest, one part awakening, and one part a beautiful mind. So these three movies all center around men,、uh, patients with mental illness. Okay, mental illness. I will show you the posters for these. Movies later, okay. So, what else does she find out? She found out one thing, okay. All successful people have in common, which is they all experience hardship at an early age. So they experience a challenge when they were young, and this challenge motivated them to grow as a person and even. Transform them into something great. Okay, so this is what the scientists call post-traumatic growth. Okay, post-traumatic growth. So here you see the movie posters for A Beautiful Mind. I have seen A Beautiful Mind when I was a teenager. It's a good. Film. I recommend you watch it. And for the Awakenings and the Cuckoo's Nest, I haven't, but they were all starred by Oscar-winning actors, so they must be good too. You will see the links to the trailers on Tron Class. So if you are interested, you can have a look at their trailers. Okay. Now we need to move on. So before we move on again, we have a few words to learn. Okay, we have a few words to learn. So adoptions means to take a child to be taken care of as your own legally. So some people they are reproductively challenged, which means they cannot have children naturally. So they will adopt children. Sojourn means a temporary stay at one place. Entrepreneur means someone who starts their business. An example. Will be Terry Guo Guo Taiming is an example of an entrepreneur. Dyslexia is a condition that affects the brain and makes it difficult for someone to read. So, a person with dyslexia may have trouble reading sentences fully and fluently. And grit is the courage and determination. Okay, even though you are. Facing a big challenge, you don't give up. Then you are a person who has grit. Disproportionate means too large or too small in comparison to something else. Okay, unwavering it means you don't change. So if I said your motivation or your passion of learning is unwavering, it means your passion in the beginning, okay, is the same as. What it is in the end, it doesn't change. Be propelled by means to be pushed to do something. T 
top something off, it means to be on the upper surface of something. So if I say something top something off, it means it is more important than the other things. Up and it means to turn something upside down. Okay, so let's keep watching the talk. So let me get it to the right place. We have turned, we have out, turned out very, very differently. differently. As, as I met successful business people and read profiles of high-powered leaders, abilities, alcoholism, and violence, Wait. the conventional thinking has been expected insight that even the worst circumstances can result in growth okay. and transformation. So let's pick up from here. A remarkable and counterintuitive phenomenon has been discovered, which scientists call post-traumatic growth. In one study designed to measure the effects of adversity on children at risk, among a subset of 698 children who experienced the most severe and extreme conditions, Fully one third grew up to lead healthy, successful, and productive lives. In spite of everything and against tremendous odds, they succeeded. One third. Take this resume. This guy's parents give him up for adoption. He never finishes college. He job hops quite a bit, goes on a sojourn to India for a year, and to top it off, he has dyslexia. Would you hire this guy? His name is Steve Jobs. In a study of the world's most highly successful entrepreneurs, it turns out a disproportionate number have dyslexia. In the U.S., 35 percent of the entrepreneurs study had dyslexia. What's remarkable, among those entrepreneurs who experience post-traumatic growth, they now view their learning disability as a desirable difficulty, which provided them an advantage because they became better listeners and paid greater attention to detail. They don't think they are who they are in spite of adversity. They know they are who they are because of adversity. They embrace their trauma and hardships as key elements of who they've become and know that without those experiences, they might not have developed the muscle and grit required to become successful. One of my colleagues had his life completely upended as a result of the Chinese Cultural Revolution in 1966. At age 13, his parents were relocated to the countryside. The schools were closed and he was left alone in Beijing to fend for himself until 16, when he got a job in a clothing factory. But instead of accepting his fate, he made a resolution that he would continue his formal education. Eleven years later, when the political landscape changed, he heard about a highly selective university admissions test. He had three months to learn the entire curriculum of middle and high school. So, every day, he came home from the factory, took a nap, studied until 4 a.m., went back to work, and repeated this cycle every day for three months. He did it. He succeeded. His commitment to his education was unwavering, and he never lost hope. Today, he holds a master's degree, and his daughters each have degrees from Cornell and Harvard. Scrappers are propelled by the belief that the only person you have full control over is yourself. When things don't turn out well, scrappers ask, what can I do differently to create a better result? Scrappers have a sense of purpose that prevent them from giving up on themselves. Kind of like if you've survived poverty, a crazy father, and several muggings, you figure, Business challenges? <laughs> really? All right, let's unpack the examples the speaker uses here. These are all examples of post-traumatic growth. Okay, post-traumatic growth. It starts with a scientific study, the result of a scientific study telling us that one-third of the children who experience early hardship ended up succeed. Okay? in 
their professional fields. So the speaker uses this statistics to start her explanation on post-traumatic growth. And the first okay example of a scrapper is Steve Jobs. You might be surprised to learn that Steve Jobs have dyslexia and other qualities that might not make people want to hire him. Okay, but because of dyslexia, Steve Jobs became a better listener, and he learned to pay greater attention to what other people are saying. In other words, her his own shortcoming uh, becomes.、Um, Becomes the major factors that train him to develop his muscle and grit for success. Okay, so this is one example of a post-traumatic growth, and then another example is a friend of the speakers, and this man experiences the Chinese Cultural Revolution, the change of political landscape in China, and from this. Experience, he didn't have the chance to receive education. But in the end, he asked himself to receive education while he was doing、uh, a a job in the clothing factory. And then in the end, he got the degree. And now, her daughter and Her, his daughter and his son all go to prestigious universities. So here we see the speaker make another joke, and she is joking that the next time you see a difficult challenge, you look at it as a business challenge. Okay, you try to turn the tide around. Okay, so here we see two examples of post-traumatic growth. How、uh, encountering difficulty or hardship or adversity early in life can be、uh, helpful for a person to be successful in the future. Okay, so before we move on to the conclusion, let's take a look at a few words. Humor means ability to find things funny. So having humor is probably the most important thing in life. And mentorship. Mentorship means the activity of giving a younger or less experienced person help, and usually it is helping them to make the right decisions. And contender means a person who competes with others to try to win something. So contender is sort of like a candidate. And then to be invested in it means you put effort and time into something, which is similar to being committed to. Okay. And get somebody through means to help someone deal with a difficult situation, and change somebody's perspective. It means to change the way a person understand or see things. The well on means to keep thinking or talking about something, not moving on. Outperform means to do something better than someone. Okay, let's finish the talk together. Scrappers know that humor gets you through the tough times, and laughter helps you change your perspective. And finally, there are relationships. People who overcome adversity don't do it alone. Somewhere along the way, they find people who bring out the best in them and who are invested in their success. Having someone you can count on, no matter what, is essential to overcoming adversity. I was lucky. In my first job after college, I didn't have a car, so I carpooled across two bridges with a woman who was the president's assistant. She watched me work and encouraged me to focus on my future and not dwell on my past. Along the way, I've met many people who've provided me brutally honest feedback, advice, and mentorship. These people don't mind that I once worked as a singing waitress to help pay for college. I'll leave you with one final valuable insight: companies that are committed to diversity and inclusive practices tend to support scrappers and outperform their peers. 
According to Diversity Inc., a study of their top 50 companies for diversity outperformed the S&P 500 by 25 percent. So, back to my original question: Who are you going to bet on, Silver Spoon or Scrapper? I say, choose the underestimated contender whose secret weapons are passion and purpose. Hire the scrapper. Right, we are done with the talk. Now let's unpack the conclusion. So for the conclusion, mainly are two points. First, have a sense of humor. Okay, so scrappers they can use humor to get them through difficult times, and you also must have something to count on so that you can overcome adversity. And I believe you can tell that. We are dealing with a speaker who is good at using statistics. You can see several percentage or numbers given in the talk to support her point, and you can tell that her 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 talk starts with the same question, start with a question, and ends with a question, and these two questions are the same. So it's a coherent, okay, speech, well organized speech. Okay, so now please go to activity seven to check your comprehension. So activity seven on page sixty-five. Okay, let's go over the answers here. Dyslexia, a learning difficulty that makes it hard to read and spell. Okay, which one should we choose? We should choose what's the problem that held entrepreneurs back. Like Steve Jobs, right? And scrappers. Okay, here is not are not true. So this is not a common problem. Okay, help entrepreneurs back. Only Steve Jobs is affected by dyslexia. Okay, so let's move on. Scrappers. Which one is wrong? Okay, which one is wrong? Scrappers often don't feel that they are in control. Okay, their lives. Yes, and then this is also wrong because this is a description for the silver spoon, right? And then Regina used to drive the president's assistant to work every day. Okay, this is also wrong. Okay, this is also wrong. And for B and C, they are true. So this is just a fairly simple comprehension check. So I would recommend you to look at activity A, and under that section, you will see a challenge area. It says Regina says that successful entrepreneurs don't think they are who they are in spite of adversity. They know they are who they are because of adversity. So work in groups and discuss the question. Of course, for this task, you just work alone. And consider these three questions: Have you ever experienced adversity? So again, adversity meaning a challenge, a difficult situation. Second, has adversity helped you become who you are? And third, do you know anyone who has had to deal with adversity in their life? So consider these three questions to help you process the talk better and to challenge the argument of the speaker. Okay. So that's it for the TED Talk.